Word swag can be used to make cute, beautiful, quick graphics for your social media. So I'm going to use a photo that I already have in my photos on my phone. You could also use the library uh, that's available or you can use, um, not the library, but the free photos that's available um, if you don't want to use your own. So first thing I'm gonna do, you could also snap a picture using the camera. Um, first thing I'm going to do is pull up the image that I want to use as the backdrop of my, um, of my graphic. And so I'm gonna go to my camera's photo library by clicking on library. When I do that, I can then go to my camera roll and select the image that I want to use. When I do this, I see the image pop up and it's in its native size and format. And so what I have the option of doing is cropping it into a square or other size, depending on what it is I'm trying to accomplish as you can see, okay? For purposes of what we're doing, we're just going to create a simple square graphic. Um, now you can see when I convert it to a square graphic or crop it to a square, part of my image gets cut off. You can use your thumb and literally just slide the image over back and forth, up and down, if you have you know, any up and down space um, to get the image positioned exactly where you want it. I'm gonna leave mine right about here to give time, give space for words and to also clearly show the image. So when we have the image sized and positioned the way we want it, we will then hit next at the top right corner. When we do that, then we have the option to add some text. Now, Word Swag is beautiful in that um, it now allows you to add multiple layers of text. Uh, it also gives you some really great um, samples of what the text will look like down below. Um, and you have all of these different options to choose from depending on the style of your graphic. You can choose any of these things to work with, okay? Now, me personally, when I create my graphics, I typically go with some combination of the first few that you see here. So one of the things I like to use is the fresh font. So I'm gonna click on the where it says fresh in the bottom, and it changes my font. Now I'm going to put my thumb on the text and scroll it, move it over, to the image where the area on the image where I want my text to show. In order to make my text larger, I will use two fingers and place my fingers on, a, on the text and literally just pinch or squeeze or open. I can twist to rotate the font. Uh, all of this is using my two fingers. It will move according to how your fingers move, okay? So that's one thing. So I like the way this white text looks on this green background. I think it shows up very clearly, which is something that's important when it comes to creating beautiful graphics. You want your text to show through clearly um, in front of the image. Um, so I'm going to put some words in here, a quote or something, and the way I'm going to do that is to do exactly what it says. I'm going to double tap double tap on that text to change it. All right, so now we have a text box and I'm deleting the text that's in there and I'm going to say something like, um, let's make the world beautiful, exclamation point. And when I am done typing, I will hit the word done. Now what this is telling me is that special characters are not always allowed by certain fonts that you choose um, and that it might not show up if this is one of those fonts. What I'm going to do is say 
that I want to continue anyway, and I'm going to see how it looks on the other side. If it looks the way I want, I'm going to leave it. If not, I'll come back and edit accordingly. So continue anyway. And as you can see, my exclamation point, which is my special character, shows up just fine. Now, this is nice, but it's not very legible. Now, one of the things about beautiful uh, web design or graphic design in general is that script text doesn't always work for everything. Um, sometimes it's best to use, and most times actually, it's best to use your script text as your accent text your accent font. So what I'm going to do is I'm actually going to edit this and make two different types of fonts so that I can magnify the words that I want to really capture the attention of the audience um, and then make the rest of it also very legible so that they actually get the message. So let's double tap on the text again. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to remove everything before the word beautiful. And I'm doing that because I want beautiful to be my, uh, my accent font, my accent text. I want it to be in script. So I'm going to hit done. And now we have just the word beautiful and it looks great. So I'm just going to size it because I want it to be nice and big. The reason I want it to be nice and big is because when you share these things on social media, so for instance, on Instagram, the image can be small. When a person is scrolling through Instagram and you want them to be able to see what your message is saying clearly as they scroll, um, clearly enough that they may want to stop and read more, all right? So now, how do we get the rest of our message on there? Well, we're going to add another layer of text. If you look at the top of your screen, it should show a button that says add text. Click there. And now we have a new text layer that we can edit. So I'm going to double tap on that text layer. Not that one, that's not the one I want. So I'm gonna click done. And I'm going to make sure that the one I want to edit is actually selected, which it is. Not now, it was, let's get it back. Okay, I'm gonna double tap on it. And this is where I'm going to say, make the world. And then we already have beautiful in the other one. So we're gonna hit done. And I'm going to put this up at the top. So I'm gonna move beautiful down again by selecting it and moving it. And I'm gonna select this one and move it up. Now, I don't want it to look like that, right? I wanna make it look nice. So I'm going to scroll at the bottom until I find a font that will match this beautiful font that I have here, something like Frank. It's plain, it's legible, it's bold, it will show up. Let's shrink it a little bit and see what that looks like. Make the world beautiful. Very clear, right? Let's see what else is available. This one, that one's okay. Now let me show you something about word swag. When you see this text pop up, you can change the format of it, uh, the way it displays by clicking on the dice in the bottom right corner of the screen. And it will take you through the different ways that this font sh can show up on your graphic. Um, and you can just keep clicking until you find one. And if you don't find one, then you can just move on to a different font. So let's say I wanted to use Key West. I could do that. And I can click the dice again and do the exact same thing until I find one that I like. I actually like this font. I just don't like that it has the line underneath it. So let me just look for one more. Yep, I'm not finding one that I want. So I'm just gonna go back to Frank for purposes of this demonstration. And that's the thing. The other thing is for brand consistency, you want to make sure that you are using the same, the same fonts consistently, right? So, um, and this doesn't have to be a forever thing. 
but just for at least a general amount of time, you want to have some brand consistency using the same fonts every time you use word swag. Um, I typically always use the fresh font because it looks a lot like the font that I use for my brand outside of word swag and um, make the world that I have this font I have make the world and it's not my typical font but it's going to work for the purpose of this um, tutorial. Now the other thing I want to do is I want to add some color to this image and I'm going to do that by um, making the word beautiful a different color. So let's play around with some colors and see what we get. So the first thing we want to do is select the word beautiful. It is selected and I'm going to click on color in the middle of the screen here in that black bar and you see the color selector pops up for us and there's a couple of ways that we can choose color. We can just scroll until we find a color that we like. I'm looking for my brand color which is fuchsia, teal, all right, I love that. I think that looks great. Um, and as you can see, there are a whole host of colors that you can choose from here, all right? So I like this pink. Um, if you want to specifically use your, <coughs> excuse me, your um, font, your colors for your brand, and you have the hex code, you can click on this little, you see this dropper here with these different like rainbow colors here? If you click on this, you can put in your hex code by clicking on the pound sign or hashtag sign here and typing in what your hex code is, whatever it is. It could be a whole different, it's just usually six digits, okay? And when you hit enter, that color will pop up and change uh, to the color that you selected. I'm gonna go with the pink that's already there. It's easier for me. To just use this pink it's close enough to my brand pink and i'm good with that all right so um we can also if you notice play with the transparency of this okay and then once we're done with it the next thing i want to show you is actually how to edit your image the actual photo itself if you so choose to do that by clicking on the image button in the middle here in that black bar so there's different um, filters that you can use on your image this is the normal filter this is what it looks like this is how we imported it we can darken it um, by clicking on darken what that does is it puts the it kind of puts a dark uh, film over the image and it makes your words stand out a little more. Um, I think it's good for the wording. I don't like what it does to my image. Um, so let's see what Lighten looks like. Lighten is really good um, if you want, again, to make your text stand out. I would not put a white background on this type of Lighten, though. If I was to use this Lighten filter, I would change that Make the World to maybe a black or a different type of color, not white, because it doesn't stand out. It's kind of bleeding into the, to the background. Um, you can also use the Blur button down there in the bottom left and blur your image, right? A little goes a long way in word swag when it comes to blurring. And you can also change the brightness of your image. Okay. Um, let's see what vibrant looks like. I like bright and I mean vibrant. You see how, let's go back to normal. This is normal. And let's look at vibrant. It really makes the colors pop. And sometimes this can be really good and it can be really helpful um, depending on what your image looks like. I like this. I think it really makes the words and the image pop. So you could definitely use that. And as you can see, there are a whole host of um, backgrounds, filters that you can use. I, all, I always love to use black and white um, filters on photos. I think it really gives it a nice classic look. 
Um, so it really just depends on the mood of this image, what message you're trying to convey, the feeling that you want to convey when you share this, um, this image on social media or your website or what have you. So for purposes of what we're doing, I'm going to leave my photo in its normal state because I think the colors are very beautiful the way they are. Um, and that is pretty much the gist of that. If I wanted to say add my, um, my name, I could add another text layer and I would probably bring it down here and I would double click on it and change it out to say brand it beautifully and click done and then I normally put that in a very straightforward font something like like this and make it small. Um, I actually probably would also just use something that's very plain that doesn't have a box around it, like ultra clean. Ultra clean, it shows up, but it doesn't show up a lot in this color. So what I'm gonna do is change the color of it. Let's see what it looks like in black. All right, so now you can kind of see it, but it's not taking up so much of, um, real estate on the image that it's the first thing people see. It's kind of like an afterthought. You want them to see it there, but you want them to see it after they've seen the image and they've seen the message with the wording that you've chosen. Now, once you are done adding your text, editing your image, et cetera, et cetera, your colors and whatnot. And everything is placed exactly the way you want it. Then we want to save, and we're going to do so by clicking save. And as you can see, it is saving for me. When you are ready, you can share it to any of these um, social media platforms that you see here. My pic has been saved to my camera roll. I'm just going to leave it right there. If I did want to share it to social media, I would go to the social media account and share it from my camera roll. You can do it however you so choose. If you want to edit this, you can hit the top left button. There's a little arrow there. You click, click that and it'll take you back in there. You can change anything that you've already done, change the image, change the colors. If you want to have different versions of this photo, but what I really want you to get from this is in WordSwag, you do not just have to use one font and take whatever they give you. You do have the ability to make things very creative, colorful, beautiful, um, incorporate different fonts, combine different fonts, um, combine different color, colors based on the brand color scheme. Um, play with the image backgrounds, black and white, vibrance, darken, depends, blur. Um, and this is how you will be able to get some really, really beautiful graphics by using the Word Swag app. Okay, so I hope this has been helpful. If it has, please, please let me know. If I missed anything that you thought was important, please let me know that also I'll definitely follow up. And um, yeah, like I said, if you have questions, let me know. And I hope this has been helpful. Again, this is Allison's niece with a quick tutorial on using WordSwag to make beautiful graphic designs for your social media.